So once again, welcome to tonight, the 8th Annual Mamaya Press Award Ceremony. The common experience of writing is a solitary affair. Whether they are actually alone in their home or sitting in a public space, writers throw their words into the void of a computer screen or a journal. Most writers rarely experience the pleasure of seeing their writing in print, and more rarely still, hearing from their readers. Maya and I founded Mamaya Press to readdress this balance. We provide a forum for writers to get feedback on their writing on our website, and we sponsor tonight the annual awards ceremony, where writers get to hear their words read aloud by actors and meet the judges who selected their work for publication and the audience they hope will enjoy their work as well. We enjoy you, the audience, to try your hand at writing um, your own story. So I hope that through the words of the authors tonight and the judges, you'll, you'll feel inspired and also empowered to kind of give it a go yourself. Mumaya Press is building a community of readers and writers around the world to inspire people to express themselves and to support each other. Most of our waking hours are spent doing things that are functional. It's a celebration of life to take time out to write a piece of fiction that exists for no other purpose than as an expression. Our own unique, individual, never to be replicated contribution to the world in which we live. A piece of writing can change how we perceive the world, and by changing how we think, we then change how we act. Through our own individual contribution, we can collectively shape the world that we live in. We hope for the better. <coughs> Greed is the theme for the Momaya Annual Review 2011. In the first place story, Where There Is a Will, greed is illustrated quite literally when a wealthy man dies and friends and relatives scramble to see who will inherit. Greed for power is shown in our second place story, Mao Yanshu, who exerts, exerts his position um, by casting off a beautiful would-be bride for the emperor. Greed for sexual experience and freedom from the constraints of marriage are explored in the third place story, Will You Miss Me? In all of these stories, the greedies learn their lessons. Perhaps, as a result, the readers will learn the same lessons vicariously and live their own lives a bit more virtuously as a result. Every year, Mamaya Press chooses a different theme. Having run eight short story competitions, we've noted how the theme can dramatically affect what types of stories people submit. Greed seems to have elicited more stories that impart a moral lesson than our theme from 2010 last year, which was about family, or our 2009 theme, which is about alienation. No one this year submitted a story that implied that greed was good. <laughs> <laughs> so with that, um, I'd like to hand over to um, our judges, who are going to talk a bit about um, what it's like to get published and maybe get, give some tips and advice. So we'll start with Alice Shepard, who's an assistant editor at Penguin. Um, so I work very much on the commercial side of the business at Michael Joseph, where we publish authors like Marion Keyes and then Jimmy Oliver and Jim French and stuff like that. So my advice might be to be somewhat skewed towards that perspective. Um, but I think you know, my main piece of advice, of advice would be something that I hear a lot of writers say is that they write a book that they really want to read. And I think that's really, really good advice. If you write what something that you yourself would love to read, I think that's really as well. Um, but aside from that, I wondered if it might be interesting to kind of take you through the life cycle of a book um, from acquisition to publication, just very briefly. Um, so if you start with acquisition, which is most, you know, arguably the most exciting point, um, at MJ we probably receive about up to 20 submissions a week um, from agents and um, if we find one that we really love we would encourage other editors to have a read of that as well. We then take it to the acquisition meeting where we try and persuade sales and all the other departments that it was uh, a really good project um, and after that we have to really assess how profitable it was working to be and therefore work out what level of launch we should be offering. Um, and then after that stage, once the book's acquired, then you kind of get the more exciting sort of creative part that's not, you know, not financial. So you have the kind of jacket brief that's kind of thinking about ideas of how to position it within the market. And that would occur to you about nine months before publication. Kind of like having a baby, let's just go through such a long process. Um, 
And then six months before publication, we'd be finalizing the copy, uh, making sure that the blurb on the back of the book was, was perfect for the market, uh, making sure that all the, um, the, the book retailers have the right information so that they can choose which books they want in and their shelves. And then for three months before, we'd be really finalizing all our marketing publicity plans um, and making sure that kind of everything is on track. And of course, the text would be in most point. That's the one thing I haven't mentioned. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that, you know, this, this would be um, so yeah, that's just a very sort of quick one through, but if anyone has any more specific questions about how to get covered, I'd be really happy to answer those for later on. I'm going to hand in to Kay. Thank you. Um, I, my name's Kay and I work at Random House. Um, I actually work in the non-fiction department, so um, my, my sort of legitimacy of speaking about how to get a novel published is possibly um, but I will uh, nevertheless um, sort of impart the, the, the knowledge that I have gained over the years of working in mm -hmm. publishing. I think the second most frequent question I, ask, get, I, I get asked is how to get into publishing in the first place and how to actually get your book published. Um, one of my authors, a non-fiction author obviously, um, I was speaking to him about what his next project is, and he says he's actually writing a novel. Um, and he was telling me about this lunch that he had with one of his friends, and they were speaking about life. Um, and the friend said, what are you doing, Simon? And Simon said, writing a novel. And the friend said, me neither. <laughs> so basically, my advice is write. Um, I think writers are just, uh, possibly creatures of procrastination. It's there and the stories are inside. Um, sort of waiting to get out. And it's just sort of the discipline and the <coughs> perseverance and determination to sit down every day and write. Um, my second bullet point here about uh, my advice about getting published is to know yourself and to know also what you aren't and who you aren't, um, the kind of novel that you do want to write and the kind that you won't. Look at your bookshelves too. Who, who do you read? Who publishes them? Look in the acknowledgments page because very often authors thank their agents and if you are sort of going down a path, um, this can help you target your submission letters to an agent or to an imprint. Um, and this is also really useful for, for people in publishing because it shows sort of uh, it shows that you've done your homework um, and you really know what you want and um, what you want the book to be ultimately. Um, again, my next bullet point is write and then uh, persevere. Um, the next one is take constructive criticism and feedback, but don't ever lose sight of, uh, of what you want your book to be um, and your vision for it. That's very important. Um, and finally, write. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I wrote. Um, <laughs> I follow Kay's advice. Um, I should say, um, we didn't confer on um, what we were going to say. And actually, there's a lot of overlap, which is probably a good thing. Um, and I see what we need to say. I can't see anyone. <laughs> and I'm assuming you're still there. Um, so um, I'm um, a novelist and have written six um, that have been published. Um, in the last six or seven years. Um, so I've been writing. <laughs> and um, I've actually published in a variety of different ways. So I actually first self-published, um, the first two books, got on the back of that, got a, a deal with Harper Collins, and I'm shortly to go back to um, self-publishing. So I'm not actually going to talk through the whole story of that because it's too long, um, and I will be down in the bar later. So if you want to um, ask me about it, then I'll happily tell you all. Um, I am um, going to focus on the um, advice that I would give with the experience that I've learned through all the different, um, well, the, the journey that I've been on. Um, as Kay was saying, um, fundamentally, the most important thing is to know what you want for your content, whether it's a novel, non-fiction, or poetry, or I uh, call it content, it's a bit clinical, but um, the stuff that you've written, what do you want for it? Is it something that means a lot to you and your family and maybe related to what your granddad did in the war? Is it so you, you, you may want sort of 10 or 20 copies? Is it, do you, are you desperate for commercial success? Do you want to be the next Dan Brown? 
Um, or is it something in between? Is it something that you know you, you've got a really um, literary idea and you really want to sort of push it in, in, um, into the right retailers so that the right people pick it up? Um, how much integrity do you have um, or, and want to retain over, over the content? Um, and the reason I'm saying all this is that I have learned um, through my mistakes <laughs> um, that you can go down, you can be so driven by the general idea of being published um, that you can lose sight of what you're trying to publish and how and how you want it to be seen. So I did exactly that by, um, with my third book, getting um, the inkling of a deal with HarperCollins, getting so excited <coughs> by it that I signed on the line without thinking about actually who I was signing with. And what I ended up doing was signing with an extremely commercial imprint that sort of turned out very, um, well, basically chick lit. And what I was writing probably didn't really fit the mould that they were um, putting all the books in. Um, and I learnt now, <laughs> retrospectively, that that wasn't right for me, but it was my decision and I made it. So if I was to have my seven years again, and if I was sitting here now um, as someone who had written content or other thought, I wish I had thought a lot more about what I wanted for that content. Um, and it may seem really presumptuous to sit there thinking, but you can't be picky and choosy when you're you know, an unpublished author. But you should be. Um, just have the confidence because you've probably written something really great and it may really suit a certain market, it may really appeal to certain people, but in order to get it in the hands of the right people, you have to sort of tread the right path. So I would say think about what that path should be.